I'm going to set the over under at 1.5 of these players remaining in San Antonio past the trade deadline. Doug McDermott, Jakob Pertl, and Josh Richardson. Are you taking the over or the under on that? I am taking the over. I think that yeah. because of where there's contract situations is on two of the players, uh, I, I think that they have to move two of them. If not, you know, what, what are you doing? You know, at least trying to get a first round pick at best. Of course, um, Pirtle has a lot more value. You know, he can definitely um, get a first round pick uh, for the Spurs. And if not, you know, Josh and, and Doug trying to get a second, um, uh, you know, definitely aiming for a first, but maybe getting a second. So the reason why I say that is because we know Josh is in the final year's contract. So he'll, you know, he'll be a free agent next year. Jakob is also in the final year of his contract. So he'll be a free agent. So that's why I feel like, um, they do have to try to make some sort of move, um, you know, not not immediately, but s- sometime down the line before the season ends. And I think also they kind of owe it to the, to the players. The players know that, you know, this is a rebuilding situation. They're saying all the right things, but they know, you know, this is the prime time of their career and this is the time they, they can be competing for championships. So so maybe, um, you know, again, uh, I, w- I would say the over right now just because of the contract situation for Pirtle and uh, Josh Richardson. As far as McDermott, I'm not too sure unless somebody's really, really wants him on the trade on the trade market. I mean, he's still like a good shooter and yes, I mean, he's not going to, sure. yeah, he's not going to give you anything on defense, but like, he can move off the ball too. Mm-hmm. Um, two follow questions to that though. Who would be most likely to stay longer term of the three? And my gut instinct is Jakob Perto, but I've actually been told that like, and I think even it's in some of the comments that Josh Richardson, who was, by the way, splitting time with uh, uh, the Spurs and the Celtics last year, like he was, he was pretty good. Um, and I've heard that he's also just like really important to that locker room dynamic and so is there a chance that it's him is it doug mcdermott just by virtue of his contract it might be mcdermott just because of his contract but honestly pop pop has a lot of belief in Jakob, where he's saying that he's right now he's like one of their foundational pieces for for this for this group um so maybe they could work with him on on re-signing him and kind of keeping him for the next like trying to get him like a four-year deal and trying to keep him for like those last two years of that deal is when they really want to be good again or like trying to compete again um so maybe it's i I would say Jakob just based on what we've seen uh but but um um Josh is definitely one of those players who they've used as a, as a locker room presence. Um, he's been foundational for helping the helping the young guys kind of being there and, and mentoring them. But like I said, he's only been here a short while. He has he has played well, but but just because of contract purposes, I would say probably Doug at this point. I've I've almost wondered though if it could. I mean, also Greg po- Popovich said like they were asking about the starting five, and he was like, "We have Jakob Pertl, and we'll go from there." So Jakob Pertl is the only lock in the starting five right now, which I found funny. And just because the center market gets so wonky, you could technically roll the dice to the summer if it's just cheap to keep him. He's not hurting your rebuild and you can move him later. And so that's also why I've kind of leaned toward him, leaned toward him as well. Excuse me. Yeah, no, no, the 100% agree there. And like I said, it's more so would he be willing to, you know, sit through another yeah. two or three years of, of you know, rebuilding uh, when he's when he's actually getting older, you know, he has his chance to be in, in the prime of his career. But like I said, uh, they really like Jakob. They've, they've helped develop him since he got traded from Toronto. Um, and I think that for him to get it for a team to ask for him, they're going to ask for a high price in terms of first round picks that they want for him because he's, he's a good player right now. I am obligated to ask this then. Um the Spurs, if you're them, how many first round picks is it taking to take on Russell Westbrook while sending out players in that process? They do have some cap space to work with, but like mm-hmm. if they're asking for Josh Richardson and then one of McDermott or Pirtle as part of that, like is Russ plus two first enough for you, or does that just not get it done? And you're like, we need to steer clear of this. All like you could even make it the three player deal where it's all the veterans, uh, Richardson, uh, Pirtle, and McDermott for Russ and two first. Like is that a deal that you consider if if you're the Spurs? I, I think I think is I think for the you have to ask for the two first. You in order to take on Westbrook's contract, they're they're going to have to ask for those two first. Uh, and then I think that to get it would probably have to be two of those players more so just to make the financials work as well. Uh, so I'd say like McDermott and Richardson is the group I've seen. If not, um, you know maybe like um, Richardson and Pirtle. So I, I just feel like if it's Pirtle, I think that's that's even higher. You need more than the two picks just because like I said, he's a really impactful player right now. Yeah, and uh, the thing I would say is that if Pirtle's involved in that deal. I like if it's all three of them, I would probably give up the two first if I'm the Lakers because I love Pirtle, even though it, look, Anthony Davis doesn't want to play center anyway. It's like the fit isn't the cleanest, but um, if Pirtle's not in there, then maybe it's like, would they do it for like one first if they're also getting off of McDermott? Uh, but they and the Pacers seem like the most, I don't want to even want to say likely, but popular Russ trade destinations at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's it's tough to, to find um, uh, trades for, for Russ and. So that's what it's going to come down to. And then that's, that's actually another thing, just talking about the trades is like, if um if the Pacers start trading making trade moves, if the Jazz continue to make trade moves, do the Spurs get involved? Because they see that these teams are just going to get worse in, in the in the tanking sweepstakes. And I've also wondered if that's more uh, puts more pressure on San Antonio to move some of those veterans because then it's like, hey, you know, we might win too many games compared to you know these teams, and then all of a sudden, you know, there goes your chance at win by Yama. Yeah, Utah, and then if Indiana does move Turner and Healed, um, plus San Antonio seemed like 
the three teams that are most dedicated to not winning this season. Mm -hmm. And so you have to make sure that they don't out tank you. So yeah, it's absolutely going to be a tank off at some point, I think. 